it's that time. Let's make a YouTube video. But I'm going to show you the entire process, why I'm always speaking so highly of Linux. And while I make a ton of videos for this channel for a week, uh, I actually did 365 videos in 365 days. Weird flex, but anywho... This is how I did it, how I was so efficient making thumbnails, doing all of the video creation in Linux. Uh, now, as far as recording the videos, I do use a Windows box for the actual recording process since I use a proprietary Canon camera and I remotely access it through that Windows box. But other than that, everything is done in Linux. So here we go, let's jump into it. I'm gonna show you everything from uh, the actual inception through the video creation process. I won't probably show the uploading to YouTube because that's kind of boring, but at least you'll know kind of how I go about creating a video and also creating a thumbnail for what I do here on YouTube because I absolutely love doing this. And why I love Linux so much is because, well, it's a lot faster in Windows. If I was doing all this in Windows, I just simply wouldn't get it done as, like I do now. So. Let's get into it. Got a lot to do. Um, and you know what? Let's do a time lapse of the actual setup here uh, coming into the studio. And that way you can kind of see this entire recording process as it's super interesting, I think, from someone from the outside looking in because I had no idea what went into it. This video is brought to you by CDN77, the content delivery network used by space agencies and CentOS. I also am using this on ChrisTitus.com to speed up my website. So if you're interested in this, click the link in the description. Okay, so a little background here. Uh, I wanted to show the actual setup. Um, this is my Linux box. This is where I actually do my edits, my notes, things like that I'll have up on this side. And then over here is where I do all the actual capture. Launch into OBS. And I always launch OBS as admin. If you don't launch OBS as admin, sometimes you can get frame, frame drops and some skippage. So pro tip, if you ever do OBS in Windows, uh, definitely do that. And then on here, I just basically launch my Canon app while I shoot it in Windows is mainly because I have access to remote uh, capabilities for my Linux, my Canon camera, where I couldn't do this quite in Linux as this app just isn't compatible. I have my record button here. This is like hit and record on the camera itself. And then I have the record over here. I'll do it simultaneously, shoot the whole shot. And then uh, at the end, I'll stop them at the same time. I like this because I can kind of do a monitor without actually having anything but a regular TV. But eventually, I'm gonna replace this whole setup with all Linux, do it all capture, so it's all just set the same way. So uh, that's really important to where I can optimize this further with Linux. Once I remove Windows completely from this equation and have everything piped through my box to where I hit record and it just records multiple streams all at the same time, it's gonna be great. So that's a little more expensive as I need a capture card with four HDMI inputs and uh, grabbing all that and putting it all into OBS and Linux would be my ideal option. But again, that's a pretty sizable investment that I just can't afford yet. So with that said, I'm gonna do the rest of this video and we'll jump over and start uh, chopping up what I'm doing. We're gonna actually do a little bit of recording and I record everything in OBS, so I'll actually do that recording and take those raw clips and drop them into here, and we'll get to e editing this video. Um, so let's jump into the edit room, launch Caden Live, and get into it. All right, let's start editing a video. Now, I'm going to probably fast forward through some of this, but I actually want to show the process. So I'll probably only go about three or 400 speed here. Um, but I'm just going to launch Caden Live and just kind of go through a sped up version of editing uh, this Windows video. <clears throat> so I usually start by just taking my existing one, dropping it into here. Uh, this says, you know, I, I leave all my project defaults from Caden Live. So I have all these defaults set. So I never have to worry about, hey, is it on the right setting? I just make sure never to set it off of 30 frames in 1080p as that's my, my go-to as it 
increases my speed and most people don't care if I'm in 4k or not uh, there's not really much benefit there also uh, everything else gets kind of set up I have my intake which is this is my audio so I don't need the video portion of this and this is the actual camera itself the camera itself um, doesn't have the shotgun mic on it just yet, but I do recommend having the shotgun mic as one, you don't have to do any audio sync. So here at the beginning, I have this audio portion that I pull in. I just go right click, set audio reverence, and then align audio. That way my audio is always in sync 100% of the time. And then I usually just ungroup this, remove that version, Hold shift, control G to group so they move together. Kind of shave off the first section here, put that back, ungroup, move up, control G to group again. And then I usually put a little fade at the beginning and. All right, let's... All right there we go. So that's the little intro to that. We'll remove that piece. So we got our intro, our outro. And then I need to pull in more stuff. So I'm going to pull up Shift E, get my Explorer up here, come over to Photoshop, a, a videos to make, and then grab in some stuff. Usually I just grab all these. So for this video, we'll grab all four of these picks and sounds. I sometimes use, you know, if I say shenanigans, I'll usually pop up a little picture or something funny happens. I might add a GIF, uh, all those things. So we'll close out of that added all those in so uh let's go grab our intro so we'll roll the intro which i'm about to actually redo seven seconds for an intro i think it's just a bit too long i do shave off usually a couple seconds each time uh if you hold control and then use your mouse wheel you can kind of zoom in and out and uh let's grab that portion sponsor spot this one's gonna be up cloud it's gonna be this sponsor of this video and usually I just make sure I got a clean transition. Now you can also do different types of transitions. Another favorite of mine is like the X linear one that gives it that push. So it depends on what you, you want, but you know, it, it depends. A lot of people say don't use dissolves. I I'm pretty heavy with the dissolve, um, but teach his own anyways. So intro's done. We got our sponsor spot in. And now we get to the meat and potatoes of the video. So we have sponsors and vids pretty much covered. We'll come into here. So uh, I have two big ones. Actually, I don't even think. Yeah, that's a junk clip. We're going to delete that out. I just have this one big clip here that we're going to throw in. So we'll take that. We're just going to do a basic dissolve. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up because basically I'm just playing through the video, seeing what kind of dead spots I have, chopping it up, pushing it together, um, and then making it to where everything's really clean. So right now it is 435 or 1635 military time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit this part and speed it up. You'll see that time ticker and you'll figure out how long it takes me to do a 25 segment uh, actually on this clip. So we'll see. Now, one thing I wanted to actually point out here, um, when doing transforms, I use this feature quite a bit. If you go into configure keyboard sh shortcuts, if there is something you use all the time, add a shortcut. Transform, I mapped it to control T because I'm constantly doing this number with uh, uh, the in the, about four keyframes, one to start it big, then go to small. So when you, you're introduced to this frame, it just does this nice little zoom effect and then at the end it goes ahead and zooms back really nice to do a uh, nice little effect i thought i'd mention the transform and hot keying this is is very very important
All right, at the end here, we'll do a little fade out and then grab a video. Uh, overall time period, a little less than an hour for this edit. Um, I had a lot of dead space in there, a lot, a lot more going on with the actual uh, file. I ended up having to re-record, so I actually stopped the recording a couple times during this uh, time lapse where I actually had to reshoot one of those scenes on the Windows security video just because it just uh, it, it just didn't quite make sense as I was piecing it together for the UAC elevation and uh, some of the, the facts in that video. I was like, all right, I'm going to have to reshoot that one little spot. And then also I wanted to cut out a whole bunch of things. Like I felt like there was too much fluff. It took me 10 minutes to make one point in the video, and I was like, that's just too long. And I didn't want that video to be over 20 minutes. So uh, re-records or a reshoot, I, I just did it on the fly there. So that was actually part of the little thing. We're still under an hour even with the reshoot and, and whatnot. That's the power of kind of like this workflow. And I could actually optimize this further, which I definitely will. But uh, anyways, let's uh, finish up with a little end screen here. I usually have kind of simplified this over the years. You know, less is more YouTube land. And honestly, most people don't even make it to the end screen. So uh, don't don't spend too much time on the end screen. Uh, just throw up some what you, you know, you're proud of, like my patrons I'm super proud of. I like to put those on the end screen. And then also just like little places you can hit me. The two biggest places are Twitch and, and Twitter uh, if you're not on YouTube. And then... You know, as far as like the next video, don't go crazy with throwing videos on the end screen. It's just pointless and you're wasting time and uh, most viewers won't see it. So don't worry too much about the end screen. People overhype the hell out of it. So overall at the end here, let's flip through all of our timeline. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, we could add a little more flair here. I probably will in this little first section. Uh, we could add a like, let's say I want to add some social stuff. Let's go ahead and toss that in here. I need to redo this, shoot it as a, like a WebM file and do it up a little bit better than this because right now it's just an MP4 with a, a green background. So what you get is the stock windows that you'll see. a little cool effect like that. I but it, I don't like it that much. I've only used it a couple times, obviously, if you've watched my videos that much. Um, mainly just because there's a little bit of green shade here, a green outline. So anyways, that's a little extra flair I can throw in there. It only takes a minute or so to set up. Uh, they actually have Caden live videos. I could actually drop an entire project right on here. If you want to do this, you, you totally can. Um, I haven't quite figured out the alpha channels and those types of things for the Caden live projects. So I'll tinker around with this more. I, I wanted to throw this in here just to say this is kind of something I'm tinkering or adding to my videos, but um, I haven't quite mastered the, the translucent effects yet in Caden Live and adding projects within projects for a little social center like this, but uh, still something I want to try. All right, so this is pretty much shot. We got a you know sponsor spot, our intro, uh, fade from black, fade to black. And we've done, in less than an hour, roughly 83 cuts, a reshoot, added some extra flares, about five or six titles into here, um, rebalanced some of the audio, and, and did some fade in, fade outs. When you're cutting scenes, a lot of times, if you, uh, it, just human nature, you're cutting into a scene, you talk a little louder, you're like, hey, I'm, I'm just coming back from a cut. <laughs> and what you can do is actually at the very beginning of that cut, like let's say right here, it would be a good example. You see how the peak, as I come back into this clip, it's a little bit more. You can kind of clean that up a little bit. So one way to get around. You can kind of clean it up a little bit with a fade in and out. You could literally spend hours and hours and hours at the edit table. But really, this is made in Caden Live. It's not a uh, premiere. I'm not color grading. I'm not doing a lot of the stuff that you see people spending days on the edit table doing. And it does add a little bit of extra to the video for them spending those days. But for me, being tutorial-based channel, it just doesn't make any sense. I literally would be sitting here editing uh, and color grading and all this other stuff. I'd have to hire a whole bunch of people to get this kind of content out. And at the end of the day, the content would be the exact same. It would maybe look a little bit better, but I'm losing maybe 10% while spending... 700% more time.
I, I just started making up figures. I, I don't know why, but anyways, you get the point. You get the point. Efficiency. That's what I am about. Efficiency and productivity. And this fits the bill. So let's go ahead, render this guy out. Obviously, under more options, I'm using 16 threads. I like to go ahead and only use one less thread than what's available, just in case the system decides to do something. So we're gonna we're gonna render this with 15 threads. It's about a 16 minute video or so. Right in the wheelhouse, chop it up, throw it down, render it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of show the time here, and then I'm gonna go eat dinner because it's dinner time. But uh, for the most part, uh, everything here is pretty good. Render time, it's usually about half of whatever the length is of the video. So I do 1080, 30 frames, and that usually means if it's a 16 minute video, it's gonna take eight minutes to render. So that's my render times. If I shot 4K video, the render time would probably be about three or four times the length of the video. So uh, maybe less. I, obviously, if I had a thread ripper, I could probably shoot 4K in about uh, about the same amount of time the render would take. But uh, again, I don't want to really dive into that too much because, like I said, 1080p works great. And I also really like the file sizes as I'm able to do just a lot more a lot quicker and... At the end of the day, you, the viewer, is the only thing that matters to me. And if I thought it would make a huge impact to you, I would do it. But to me, it doesn't. I don't see any point. And as a viewer myself, I don't care if someone's in 4K or 1080p, as long as their content's good. So I'm going to leave this to render. It actually is under six minutes now, so it won't take long at all. So that was making a YouTube video. I do this quite often, but I love doing it. And I couldn't imagine still loving it if I was using Windows for a lot of my editing. Um, I did sacrifice a little bit of things. Like I don't have any color grading on my video content. I don't have a lot of the more fancy tools that integrate with like Adobe Premiere. Um, some of these things I just sacrifice and I'm okay sacrificing them. And honestly, if I really needed them, I could use like DaVinci Resolve and have a dedicated production uh, station and things like that. But uh, I don't really need them. I, I think most YouTubers just go a little overboard with this and spend way too much money on something that honestly doesn't really matter that much to you, the viewer. Uh, I think shooting in 8K and all these other things, I... I literally would just make my whole production cycle 20 times longer than it, it already is. And uh, I think it, it's just overkill for, for most people. For a tutorial-based channel like mine, it's definitely overkill. Um, now, maybe a filmography channel, it might be a little bit different. If you're a filmmaker and you're making uh, YouTube videos about film, you probably should make those look as best as you possibly can. But uh, for me... I think just getting it to the point where someone can watch the video and go, oh, doesn't look like crap. <laughs> uh, what's the content about? That's what it all boils down to. If you don't have good content and it's just you blabbing away about nothing, you're going to have problems no matter how good it looks. So content before everything else. And then uh, find a really efficient, fast style like I have with Linux and you'll do well. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.